everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Show.Live. My name is Mitch Jackson. There is no Jen Hoverstead joining us this evening. And our roundtable is a very special roundtable tonight because it's more of a triangle tonight. We have Robert Scoble, Shell Israel, and yours truly on The Show.Live. Malia Probst and Kathy Hackle were not able to make it. Frankly, we're lucky that we're doing this, right, guys? <laughs> Absolutely. We're lucky that we're doing this, but let me give you guys a proper introduction and talk a little bit about the Transformation Group, your new LLC, your new California company. And Robert Scoble and Shell Israel are the co-founders of the Transformation Group, LLC. They've been researching, writing, and speaking about tech together since 2005. They're co-authors of three outstanding books, Naked Conversations, Age of Context, which I absolutely loved, and The Fourth Transformation, How Augmented Reality and Artificial Intelligence Will Change Everything. They founded the Transformation Group in March of 2017, and it's the first consulting firm dedicated to helping big business, big brands develop and implement mixed reality. Gentlemen, thanks for being on today's The Show.Live. Really appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us on. It's my pleasure. So let's dive right into mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, and all the cool things you guys are doing at the Transformation Group. Um, I understand reading the book that there's a big pivot that's taking place between linking tech and people uh, to the total experience. That's what you guys are focusing on. Robert, maybe you could share with us why the experience of technology is what people are focusing on today. Because the user interface is about to radically change, right? And the first three transformations were uh, one command line on the personal computer where you're typing into DOS or typing onto the Apple II. Second was GUIs where you can point and click. The third one was touch on a mobile phone so you can carry around your device. And the fourth one is mixed reality glasses where it puts augmented stuff or virtual stuff on top of the real world. And it gives you as many monitors, virtual monitors, as you want, which is really going to be a huge selling point for a lot of people. So are those also referred to as smart glasses, uh, Shell? Is that what you're referring to? Um, we should have reversed questions there, Robert. Well, they will be. Um, it, it's right now we're early in technology, and the technologists are naming everything and splitting hairs about what is what. When this becomes a mass market object, it's probably going to cost about 200 bucks and look a lot like this. There may be another piece to it in your pocket. And it'll do AR or VR or MR, and that will very likely be called something like smart glasses. I hope it is. It's a good, easy term, and I can spell both words. The, the problem is smart glasses, are, all of these con uh, terms are getting confused by marketers and marketing, and we're going to argue about it forever, and we're going to call it whatever Apple calls it, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> well, you know, and what's exciting is, is, is the experience and the value they're going to be giving to the consumer and what you guys are doing at Transformation Group, you know, showing brands how to – take advantage of this new technology and how to link it and create new experiences. That's what's really exciting. Robert, you and I were early users of Google Glass. I was using them yep. uh, in the courtroom and everything like that. And it really opened my eyes to the power of what you guys are talking about. And Shell, you mentioned, you know, whether we call it uh, smart glasses or any other term, by 2025, you guys are, are anticipating or estimating there's going to be some big changes rolling around by 2025. We, we predicted in the book that that um, by the year 2025, is the handset that is at the center of our digital life today will be replaced by a headset. And that's a remarkable difference. It means that the experiences your customers are going to have going into stores is immersive. Um, it means that when you're checking out an airbnb or a hotel room you'll actually be able to take a little walk through it with while still researching it in your own home um it, it essentially changes the world by a full dimension and it makes your online experience much more like your real world experience except now you have the advantage of being able to zap aliens as they come through the wall at you <laughs> yeah. What what's really going on is is a m number of different things. 
the mixed reality glasses are a uh, cop are going to come along with a new kind of map. We're basically building a copy of the real world and laying that copy on top of the real world. So uh, self-driving cars do this, robots do this, drones do this, and mixed reality glasses do this. And then once you have that copy, you can put virtual things on top of that copy, like a, 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 a SpongeBob walking around taunting you, right? Or a blue line in a shopping mall taking you to blue jeans in the mall. And you're going to see a lot of really interesting new things coming along in the next three years because of the billions of dollars that's going into R&D uh, from many companies, right? Microsoft is doing the HoloLens and has a multi-billion dollar effort underway. Apple spent more than $10 billion already on their next iPhones and, and the next the glasses that they're developing. Uh, uh, you know, Magic Leap got $1.4 billion of investment to build the glasses and, and build an operating system. Uh, Google has its own team underway and has bought a, a, even a company that was in our book, and on and on, right? There, there's at least 10 glasses that I know of underway, and most of them are coming from very well-funded uh, organizations. You know, you know, what's interesting is when you talk about change and how quickly things are happening, just today in a uh, AR, VR newsletter that I get, uh, they talked about the Apple iPhone 8 uh, having VR type of capabilities. That's something, Robert, that you've been talking about for a long time. And it's it yeah. looked like it's looked like it's finally coming to fruition. Um, PayPal just filed a patent that's going to allow for a system that will allow people to purchase things while in a VR type of environment. Yeah, I mean, that that's just crazy. Virtual, yeah. virtual goods are going to be huge in this environment because if you're playing tennis with your friend, uh, head can show you a new virtual. Uh, and Shell, can you please put your thing on on mute because I'm hearing uh, sounds that are really distracting. Um, so uh, I uh, head, I know, but I, I I'm hearing it. Um, head. Uh, is going to give you a virtualized uh, tennis racket and might, might charge you $3 for that tennis racket. It'll be more polygons. It'll be sharper. It'll be uh, easier to beat your friend with this new racket, right? And you'll have to pay $3 for that. Now, on the Apple ecosystem, they ain't going to let PayPal in. Sorry. Uh, they ain't going to let Bitcoin in. Sorry. You're going to have to pay for everything on the Apple world with Apple Pay because Apple wants its 30%, and that's the way it is. Now, on Google's side, when Google or Microsoft or somebody else comes along, they're, they're potentially going to do deals with PayPal or with um, a Bitcoin, which is going to let us do all sorts of microtransactions in this new world. I'm not, everything is about to change about how you pay for things, because you're going to walk around with these glasses, you're going to touch a pair of jeans in a shopping mall, and it's going to charge you right there, all right? And, and, and it's going to know what genes you're looking at because it has AI running that knows where you are in the store and what products you're uh, touching, and it's going to put it in the virtual shopping cart. Shell and I saw that at uh, Prime Sense's booth four years ago, right? And Prime Sense got bought by Apple. So it, it's pretty crazy what's coming uh, in the next few years. And, and along with the glasses, you're getting new kinds of drones that are coming, and the drones I'm seeing are unbelievable, particularly when they have this 3D map to fly around right in your house or, or out in the real world. It will never hit a tree again, right? Because it'll know where all the trees are and where the buildings are, and they'll be able to fly down the street and without human uh, intervention. And you're getting new kinds of cars, self-driving cars that use the same or very similar technology to these mid uh, uh, mixed reality glasses. You know, in your book, you mentioned about, you quoted somebody talking about how quickly things are changing and what we're, the change we're going to see over the next 10 years will be more than what we've seen change in technology over the last 50 years. And that's uh. mind blowing when you think about it. And, you know, I fly drones and I've got the advent uh, headgear. So I'm flying first person with my drone over the Pacific Ocean. And it's amazing but you put me in a virtual reality type of situation and it's game on. You won't even see me here at the office. Okay. I'm going to be down with my toes in the sand. Let's talk business for a second. I've got a client that's interested yeah. in reaching out to the transformation group to, to incorporate MR type of technology into what they're doing. Um, explain a little to me, how can I explain concepts like uh, 
point cloud and spatial computing to them? And what type of marketing budget would they need uh, to come into your facility and, and and run with the ball when it comes to can, MR? Shell, can I take the first half of that and then uh, I'll let you talk the business aspects of it? So uh, you asked about point cloud. The next iPhone is going to have two 3D, 3D uh, sensors on it, one front-facing, one back-facing. And these sensors are going to see millions of points uh, around the room, right? And it's going to map your room in 3D. It's going to map the street in 3D. It's going to map it, me in 3D. In fact, they bought a company that's going to do all sorts of stuff with my face when I'm aiming this new camera and the new sensor at my face. So... Um, it, 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 what, what that sensor does is take millions of points of light and millions of points of data on something like my room or my face and convert that to a point cloud. Once you have the point cloud, now you can see the form of the 3D uh, world that, that it's pointing at. Then it's going to convert the points because there's way too much data there to pass over uh, today's cell phone networks. Um, so it's going to convert that to either volumetric pixels, which are a new kind of pixel. So the old pixel used to be just a, a grid on a screen, right? But these pixels are going to be everything in 3D. So my room around me is going to have a grid of, of voxels all around me, and it's going to be um, millions of them. And so um, now we can overlay anything virtual on top of the walls or whatever around me, and that's going to be really cool. In terms of transformation group, we're, we're building a supply chain of different kinds of companies from neuroscientists to developers to uh, other to people who have volumetric cameras to other other people who can help out brands as they are going to be forced because every brand in the next five year five years is going to be forced to build a virtual part of its brand, sort of like Sephora, which has virtualized augmented makeup. Uh, and is building a brand. They already have augmented reality signs when you go into the store with your phone. That's what today's phone, right? And, and wait until you see what comes out in September, right? So, Shell, take it over. <laughs> well, well, actually, you just handled a good deal of the business side, but um, <clears throat> it, it's. let me back up and wind it downward a little bit that uh, to business people right now, they're not quite seeing what we're seeing because they're busy making their quarter. And there is this maelstrom building up. And on one side, you have the most talented, most affluent, and most powerful tech companies in the world all converging into this new transformation. And this guy that has to decide about all this is trying to figure out what he's going to put on the shelf for Christmas. And this probably isn't going to be a mixed reality Christmas other than selling product. But if you're in a business, you're in the middle of a perfect storm of an emerging generation of young people who are really in love with this stuff, who are going to want to have the kind of experience you get in mixed reality, the same way that a generation earlier, if you wanted to reach the new customer, you needed to have a smartphone. Yeah. Now it's a new level. Let, let me just talk for a second, Robert. Um, <laughs> If somebody is going to start with us, it's a process and I'm not going to take our time here with 15 uh, minutes of bias, bias, bias. But there are two things. We start with education. We try to understand first, educating ourselves to understand where this company is, what they're worried about, who their competition is, and what they need to do to stay a little ahead of their competition and a little ahead of their next customers. The second thing is we try to take what we learn there, come back and educate them. We do it in a few forms. Usually we have a workshop where Robert and I speak. We kind of give our, uh, our um, survey course on steroids. And that's followed by a few other experts. We have 14 partners who we consider experts. And we bring in the right one. It might be Groove Jones, who does activations for major brands. Reality Science, which is a consultancy made up of 
uh, neuroscientists who know about it. We have proprietary research people. And we figure out what these people need to know. After that, we get into a typical consulting thing where we figure out what they need to do first. We find something simple and small so we can all understand how it works and they can get a taste of what it's like before there's a heavy duty investment of time and money. So that's how your your client would um, w would get started. And then the last thing is to call me, not Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting, guys, is I noticed at your website, you did break down that you guys like to meet with the executive team one-on-one -on -one, um, and uh, probably explain exactly, Shell, what you just shared with, with our audience. And that, that's, a good, that's a good idea because I don't think a lot of professionals really understand what's going on unless they're in the tech sector. No, that's true. And it, keep in mind, you're going to see a lot of augmented stuff come out over the next five years. Um, you know, think about a hotel or a car company or a, a real estate company. What, what, is, what is it that you're going to see in these glasses when you finally do get the glasses as you're interacting with their brands? And, and it's already started. These companies, have, you know, the, the bleeding edge has already started. We, uh, we just visited the PGA Tour. They're building a, a app for the Microsoft HoloLens so that you can watch golf in a new way because they already have a 3D scan of every golf course in the world. They already have a sensor array for watching the ball going through the air and landing on the green. They already uh, do all the scoring electronically. So they're made for this kind of uh, system where you're going to be able to watch golf in a new way. Here's what's going on. It's... Uh, there's a line that my editor tells me I use in every book I write, and that's the future is sooner than you think. And the fact is that there's an acceleration of new technology that's been yeah. going on for a dozen years. Right now, you could be the head of a shoe company. And Jesus, you haven't seen anybody walk in with virtual reality glasses on and a 400-foot cord because it's still tethered and say, hey, wow, I want to see what it looks like inside these shoes. <laughs> it's so coming. They're, they're just watching what they need to do. Should they have a sale? Should they discount those brown loafers over there? But what's happening is all this technology is moving very, very quickly. Uh, about a month ago or less than a month ago, uh, Mark Zuckerberg stood up at um, his, his developer conference and declared his company was now a uh, social, uh, an AR social platform. Uh, well, gee, I thought it was a social network. And he used <laughs> yeah. a term that Robert and I are cheering, but most of the world never heard before. And they didn't quite understand just how special that was. In a couple of weeks, uh, the much of the word? Apple launch is going to come along. And when that does, it could be as amazing as Robert and I hope it will be, but it may take, geez, a real long time from a developer's one. It might take till September or even October. But at this time, all these companies that have been ignoring this are going to discover there are millions and millions of customers with AR capabilities in their hands. And those well, AR capable, cap, capabilities will very soon also be in headsets to work with those hands. And all of a sudden, these managers have been doing very fine, thank you very much. We don't need any social media here, they said 10 years ago. But ignoring this, ah, it's game stuff, it's for kids, you know. Well, when you think of kids, just remember, in the 10 years we're talking about, the first millennials will become grandparents. Um, so when you yeah. think about the near-term future, think about young users who are influential to other people who are junkies on experiences and that the experience is about to change. So, you know, it's yeah. funny, one of the leading market research companies in, in technology is still making, doing quite well financially by um, selling uh, uh, webinars on, not webinars, workshops on the mobile mind shift. If you're still worrying about your customers and the mobile mind shift, you're probably servicing uh, homes for the elderly. Uh, <laughs> Shell? Yeah, yeah. It, it Things has, are happening. Shell? 
Yeah, good. Shall, what was the word that you said Facebook talked about? Was it mixed, was it augmented reality or was, uh, you said that Zuckerberg said a word? He said it was uh, that they were becoming a social AR platform. Yeah. A social yeah. AR platform. So and, can I, that, can and I he told me, think about and he that, told that's me, huge. He told me separately that he's building mixed reality glasses, but those are going to take, a, he said a few years, you know, i.e. three to five years uh, for Facebook to come in. He bought a micro LED company in Ireland that's going to do uh, really small uh, lights for these new optics and so on and so forth. It's, it's coming. It's, it's just, and it's right around the corner. You know? So it, it is coming and in the last five to 10 minutes, you guys, I do want to talk about the eye tracking technology and I think mm. it's called Blipper or I might be mispronouncing it. But before we do that, I want to take you guys back in time four years ago because things changed so quickly. And this yeah. was a 45 second uh, video I want to show or share with you. It's one that I did at the Wall Street Journal with uh, Gabby Stern and Peter Diamandis. And you're gonna get a kick out of what Peter had to say. This is this is fun. Let me see if I can bring it up here real quick. If I've got it, here it is. Let's see if it works. And it's really, uh, we're in a very transformative time. Um, I think that every aspect of uh, every industry uh, is going to be changing. And it's really a function of you as, and the fact that you're here tells me that you're already doing this, uh, as a professional, staying on top of it. But there will be a point in the future where the conversation goes something like this. Uh, no, 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 I do not want that human touching me. They could make a mistake. I want the robot doing the surgery, for God's sakes. Uh, and it may well be, you know, I don't want the, uh, the lawyer uh, representing, I want the I want the AI that won the last 975 cases representing me as well. So there's going to be an interesting flip that could occur there. So when I heard Peter say that, I realized I need to start investing more of my time in AI and doing what you guys are doing, so that I don't left, get left in the dust as a lawyer. But you know that was four years ago, and uh, that's you know. It's just amazing to see how quickly things are changing. Speaking of things changing, tell us a little bit about the eye tracking technology. Shell, you talked about at some mm. point being able to write a book using your eyes. How does that yeah. work? Um, the company was called iFluence. It now has a new name, which is Google, which makes us sad because I could tell you a lot more of what they were doing. If our good friend, the founder, Jim Margrath, the founder of iFluence, hadn't been acquired and have different NDA standards. iFluence lets you actually do things by moving your eyes. Don't think of eye tracking, which lets them watch you what you do. But you can open files, you can uh, cruise the internet, you can, um, well, for my little demo, he let me uh, do two rounds of whack-a-mole. Whack uh, the first right. time I did the old-fashioned way, I put on a headset, an OTG headset, and I started nodding every time I saw a mole, and I did like 45 of them, and I got a headache. The second time, I just sat there, and I moved my eyes, and I knocked off like three times as many, about 120 in the same period, and I didn't have a headache. The eye is the fastest part of the human body. It is infinitely faster than fingers. At that time, Jim told me that he was working on a keyboard, which would be in virtual space in front of me. And I would, Robert, <laughs> I'm going to cover your face because that close up, it's really too scary. I'd rather zap aliens. Wait a minute, where's my zapper? Wait, this will work. This will work. Um, I love it. But he told me that he would estimate that I would be able to type about nine times faster with my eyes than with my fingers. There is one thing faster than the eyes, by the way, but it's not in the external part of the human body. It's what the eye connects with so quickly. It's the brain. And there are companies such as Mind Maze, a... Uh, games and a medical solutions company in Switzerland that uses VR to treat 
um, to try to cure schizophrenia, to treat Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, uh, stroke trauma, uh, amputation trauma, um, all using virtual reality and a special technique called um, mirroring. It, 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 it it is a preview of coming attractions. The thing is very expensive. You rent it, you don't buy it if you're suffering from this. And it sticks out sort of like a shoebox in front of your face right now. But this is day one. Um, you, in terms of the evolution, what's going on is AR and MR and VR have all just crawled out of that evolutionary swamp. It's now starting to sprout cute little virtual legs, which are going to get solid and it's going to have feet, and then it's going to start moving faster and faster. And we're now just getting to the point where you look around, and if you're not into this stuff as Robert and I and you are, yeah. You're going to say, this is a bunch of really crazy stuff that gets my wife dizzy and, and, and all they're doing is zapping aliens and doing all this. But it's yeah. just beginning. I mean, Case Western is helping anatomy students um, um, do operations on virtual hearts rather than grab a cadaver from out of the freezer and drag it out, defrost it and chunk it in. So next time you or someone you love is under an operation, be happy if they learned at Case Western and they and they learned how to do a virtual reality. So Robert, and already before, before already the you. computers are uh, already surgery is being done by AI, and yeah. already you will want AI to do your eye surgery because it's far more accurate than a, a human hand. I mean, you shouldn't let me touch your uh, eyes because I my hands shake a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know? And imagine if you told someone that 40 years ago, what would they say, right? So things are changing. Listen, guys, here's what I want to do: is I want to try a case. I'm a, I'm a trial lawyer. I want to try a case with my toes in the sand down at Strands in, in Dana Point. And I want to pick a jury virtually from around the world. Instead of a jury pool in Santa Ana, I want my jurors to come in from around the world as experts in the, in the issues involved in the case. I want to use digital documents and things in virtual reality courtroom. And I think it's going to happen. And I'm looking forward to it. You, but you, you're not thinking for first of all, I got lost for a minute because I love Dana Point and I didn't know that's where you were. Yeah, strands. Absolutely. Yeah. It's but, the most beautiful beach in the world. But well, we've got Limitor up here and we can start duking it out on that. But stop, Robert, stop. Stop moving. Stop moving. Okay. Now don't move. <laughs> Put your mute button on. Set. Set. Stay. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I was trying to get I was trying to get in here and make a point that the next iPhone is going to have a 3D sensor. It's going to be able to to let my son, who's going to be a cop, take a single photo in a crime scene, and then you, as the lawyer, is going to be able to walk the jury around the crime scene in 360 degrees and really examine the crime scene in a new way and convince people of your client's innocence or guilt. Right. The, the the issues around that with taking instead of putting your jury into a bus and taking them to a location to be able to do that virtually saves everybody so much money and so much time. But there are a tremendous amount of evidentiary issues with foundation and authenticity, uh, what's admissible. So it's going to be an exciting time for all of us to figure these things out. Uh, Shell talked about the the early MR beast coming out of the swamp. And we need to keep those beasts dressed appropriately. And one of the things in your book, Robert, talked about, I think it's called Blipar. Oh, I thought and you were going to go to naked conversations when you got into that dress part, but that's a whole other <laughs> way. I'll go either way on this. But I really, it's just a technology that, that most people have never heard of. And if you could just spend a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about that technology, it's amazing. Yeah, Blipar is a visual search engine for mobile phones. So you aim your phone at a like a cereal box or a Coca-Cola can, and all sorts of stuff happens on the screen just because it's uh, aiming at the Coke can or a cereal box or or even a pair of dogs. When I interviewed the founder on stage at a collision conference a couple of years ago, he bought two two dogs, and it accurately figured out which uh, breed of dog that we were aiming the phone at. So that 
whether Blippa or not uh, survives or uh, is, thrives, this is what's coming because it has to, because the self-driving car has to look at a bush or a dog or a kid and know the difference between those three things, because if it's just a bush, it can keep going. If it's a kid or a dog, it has to stop and take some evasive action, and it's going to know it that accurately. The AI is stunning, that's the stuff I've seen come out the, out of the R&D labs and out of the self-driving car industry. And you're going to see Google use its self-driving car uh, investment, for, which it's done for the last 10 years, uh, in, in the mixed reality glasses. So you're going to aim your glasses at all sorts of stuff, and it's going to tell you about that world. Or it might not tell you anything, but it'll know that that's a table over there, and that's a chair, and this is a floor, and that's a ceiling, and that's a tree, and that's a, a sign. And it's going to be able to put new things on top of those virtual items or virtual things that are interacting with those things, right? Uh, SpongeBob crawling around my desk. So, so if I have a client just, that's just, a big surfing just company. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. I, I just wanted to add what I thought the important part of Blipper is since she asked me the question to begin with. And that, I forgot the name of the founder, but he has a vision of a new visual web that'll be at least 100 times bigger than the World Wide Web of, web of today. Yeah. And in it, you will be able to communicate and buy visually. So you can be walking down the street, and I like this guy's uh, sneakers, and I'll hold my phone up, it'll capture, it'll notice the Nike swoosh on it, let's say, and it will tell me where I can buy it uh, with a gesture or with a touch of my finger, and it will order it for me in my size and deliver it with my credit card on record because my phone will know all that about me. Also, it allows people to communicate without the use of language. So a street vendor in China can now sell things, wares that they hold up, a Chinese handmade kite, for example, or, or a Singaporean mask, for example, and I can buy it here so that the idea of uh, ESRI, which uh, is got artists and goods from all over the world, gets accelerated enormously. I think that's a really exciting vision for how the first world and the third world equalize a little bit to the advantage of all three worlds. Isn't it amazing yeah. how this technology is just knocking down walls and it's, and it's bringing us together? Yeah. But yeah, it's just, and I think with the young adults, they don't see the same barriers that we, we've seen growing up. Um, they're, they're playing, with, we, we talk in our book about uh, the, the Netscape generation. Well, these are kids that code before they get to kindergarten. And they're they 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 think in 3D, but but more than that is the fact that they share when they create something cool they put it up on YouTube and give it away. They don't yeah. talk. They don't hire a lawyer to uh, yeah. worry about property rights. Um, they think if it's good and I made something that was cool, here take a few strings and make something even better. I'd be proud of you if you did that. It's a whole different kind of global consciousness. Yeah. It is national boundary agnostic, which considering our current state of events is a very good thing to be. I'll second that. Gentlemen, if, uh, if uh, I had a client or friends of mine that are watching this have clients who they'd like to refer your way, what, what is your ideal client? What are you looking for as far as uh, the type of business, uh, the type of marketing budget that will accommodate what you guys are doing? <laughs> Can I take the first shot of that, Shal? Um, no. I'm going to anyways, because <laughs> you took first shot at a couple of Please do. Um, we are looking for companies who are big budget, big brands, who need to augment and get ahead of the market for these new customers who are going to walk in their front door with these mixed reality glasses sometime in the next 36 months. And uh, Shell, take it away. Okay. Well. Staying actually with what Robert said, I violently agree with what he just said, <clears throat> is right now there are an awful lot of companies that are looking for case studies on something that's never happened before, and then they want to copy the thought leaders. Well, we're looking for the thought leaders. We're looking for the companies that want to go where no one has gone before. 
give their customers experiences that other people who are other customers will want to come in that door. And we want to be their partners in enabling them to make this extremely complex journey simpler and faster to get through. What you just said, Shell, reminded me of a quote at the beginning of one of your chapters. And the quote goes, you're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only only of sight and sound, but of mind, a journey into the wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. And that was by Rod, Rod uh, Serling. Serling of the Twilight Zone. So here's why I'm yes. bringing it up. His brother, Bob, wrote my letter of recommendation for law school. And in his book, The President's Plane is Missing, my mom, Colette, is a character in that book. So what a small world this is. Gentlemen, this has been a blast. Thank you for putting up with the glitches on tech. Robert Scoble, Shell Israel, their company is Transformation Group. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks. I had a ball. Bye. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <sighs>